So this is Unlock Circuits 18EC42 Module 1 Lecture 4. We are discussing the uh, first part, which is MOSFET biasing. So we already know that the, you know, what is the purpose of the biasing? To establish a constant DC current in the drain of the MOSFET. And that will be, the, in addition to the DC current, we can say, you know, establishing the, uh, what you call, drain to source voltage. So this constant DC current in the drain is known as ID and drains to source voltage is written as VDS. So we should have stable and predictable DC current ID, DC drain current ID and DC drain voltage VDS that ensures operation in the saturation region for all expected input signal levels. So again, in the middle of the load line. Now here, it is saturation. You should try to differentiate that. We have in the, you know, uh, VJT, the three regions which are cut off, active, as well as the saturation. There we operate the amplifier in the active region. Whereas here, we have three different regions in the MOSFET again, cut off, you know, we don't call it as active, but we call it as triode region, and then the saturation region. For the amplifier, for the MOSFET to act as an amplifier, we use the saturation region, we don't use the triode region, right? Whereas in the VJT, we use the active region, not the saturation region, okay? So that we should always remember. Okay, so the different biasing schemes are fixed VGS, which is really speaking a bad biasing scheme, similar to the, you know, fixed, uh, what you call VVE. Then we have here fixing of VG and connecting a resistance in the source lead, right? And biasing using a drain to get feedback resistor and biasing using a constant current source. This is the out of the scope of our syllabus, constant current source, source, but by far this is the most used one in the integrated circuits, that is VLSI design. So you will be using this more in the VLSI, again, as I said earlier, VLSI design, uh, which will be there in the sixth semester, okay, fifth or sixth semester, we'll just see that. Okay, so, uh, you know, how it is a bad biasing scheme, fixed VGS is a bad biasing scheme is what we will see now. So biasing by the fixing value, fixing the value of VGS. So if we fix VGS, then we know that ID and VGS have a relationship, which is this. ID is equal to half of mu n C O X W Y L VGS minus VT whole square. In the saturation region this is in the you know saturation region okay so if the you know this is the equation if the value of vgs increases id also increases now however here if you see cox also varies you know wl also varies you know vt also varies with you know most of the time we see that they vary with temperature also, we see that the VT, the COX, the WL will be different for different wafers and different batches of wafers. This will be, these three values will be different for different wafers of the MOSFET, uh, rather semiconductor device, which is used for building up the MOSFET and it will be different for different batches of the wafers of semiconductor device, which is used for building the MOSFET. So they might vary quite a lot. Also, we see that VT and mu n, VT as well as mu n, are temperature dependent. So if temperature varies, VT and mu n both are going to change. Therefore, if temperature varies, ID also is going to change. So therefore, we see that, you know, for one particular device, this might be the characteristic. And for another particular device, this might be the characteristic. So if VG is this value, then we see that the 
two devices have two different values of ID1 and ID2, quite a large you know, variation. That is what he is telling here. That is why this fixing of VGS is a very bad biasing scheme. Coming to the next one, biasing by fixing VGS and connecting a resistance in the source. So we are connecting a resistance in the source and we are trying to bias by the, what you call the value of uh, VG, fix VG, okay, fix VG. So fixing VG and VG uh, uh, and connecting a resistance in the source leads to X. So this is not fixing VGS, it is fixing VG, okay. I think we have written here fixing VG. So I think there's a print mistake there. So it is printed, you know, fixing VG, not VGS. Please remember that. So uh we can write the equation this one vg you can see that here vg is nothing but vgs plus rs into id vg is equal to vgs plus r into id okay so we are fixing the vg that means vg is constant you can always write this as vgs is equal to vg minus rs into id okay vgs is equal to vg minus rs into id where vg is a fixed value okay so now if the value of id increases so generally you know vg is much greater than vgs so id will be mostly determined by vg and uh, rs not vgs and vt however we can always consider that the rs is acting as a negative feedback how it is acting as a negative feedback we will see or we also know that negative feedback stabilizes, okay, gives stability, and it gives stability to the bias current ID, okay. Anytime the positive feedback is used in oscillators, and negative feedback is used for stabilizing the amplifier, that is the standard, okay. So if ID increases, if ID increases, then VGS should decrease because vg remains constant if id increases voltage drop across this increases if voltage drop across this increases because this is constant vgs should decrease okay vgs should decrease but if vgs decreases from this formula we can say that id decreases so what does that mean a increase in id will decrease the value of vgs but a decrease in VGS increases uh, what you decrease in VGS decreases the ID. So an increase in ID, you know, will compensate. You know, the the RS uh, resistor is trying to compensate. Whenever there is an increase in ID, it is brought back to almost the same value, thus giving the stability. Thus giving the stability. So this is the equivalent circuit over here vgs this is the sorry characteristic over here and in the characteristic it is shown you know for two different values of the you know vgs okay so because of the you know uh, what you call increase in the value of id we see that the uh, you know vgs is uh, decreasing vgs is decreasing that means first initially we take this VGS is decreasing, but decrease in VGS will decrease the value of ID because the characteristic is this now. Characteristic is this now. So therefore, they'll be quite close compared to the earlier one. You can see that here there is they are quite far away from each other, whereas here they are quite close to each other, and that is because the ID is brought back by the decrease in VGS. The ID also decreases so increase in id will lead cyclically to decrease in id thus giving us the stability okay so the value of id variation is very small okay now we have different schemes one is this scheme and another is this scheme for uh, you know the fixing of vg right one is this scheme and another is this, this is Again, the voltage divider network we are trying to implement. 
here we are just using a capacitor to you know remove the what you call uh, dc when we operate as a uh, amplifier so because the dc should not affect so this is known as the coupling capacitor similar to what we can take in the you know bjt also okay first let us come to this this we already studied in the you know uh bjt also similar circuit only that we had there you know rc and re here we have rd and rs that's all so here we are using a single power supply vdd right both the this this end and the this end are connected to ground so effectively these two are connected together and these two are connected together connected together and connected to VDD and these two are connected together and connected to ground. So we are using one VDD and VG is got by the voltage divider network which is RG1 and RG2, okay, in the, which are in the megaohm range. You can afford to have in it in the megaohm range because the input impedance of the MOSFET now is infinite. Please remember that there is a finite input impedance of the BJT, but input impedance of the MOSFET is infinite. BJT has finite input impedance, whereas the MOSFET has infinite input impedance, which is very much important. What does this input, uh, what you call infinite impedance, input impedance lead to? If we have infinite input impedance, current flowing through that will be zero. This is very much important. Whereas in a BJT, IB will not be zero, okay? In a BJT, IB will not be zero, but in a MOSFET, IG will be always zero. IG will always be zero, okay? So because this is zero, you can afford to have very large, you know, uh, biasing resistors. Whereas in transistor, you can't afford to have very large biasing resistances okay okay so rg1 and rg2 will be can be chosen large because we have large input resistance to the signal okay rd is you know large for high gain but small enough to keep mosfet in saturation you can't say that rg should be very 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 large because it should be large so that gain is large because we will see that it is again gmrd but to keep uh, the, uh, the MOSFET in saturation, it should be small enough so that, you know, we maintain that, right? We maintain it because the if, if ID is large, IDRD will be large. If IDRD is large, then definitely, you know, uh, what you call, it should not exceed the value of VDD, okay? So generally, we again consider the same thumb rule, one third here, one third here, and one third here. Okay, one third of VDD here, one third of VDD here, one third of VDD here. So we use the RD and RS in such a way that we have one third voltage here, one third voltage here, one third voltage here. Okay, so RD large for high gain but small enough to keep the MOSFET. So we can just say that the value of RD will be, you know, limited by uh, the VDD. Uh, RD ID equal to one third of VDD. Okay, coupling capacitor CC1, as I already said, blocks the DC and couples the you know AC signal to the amplifier. To the amplifier. Without disturbing the MOSFET DC pass point. So this is just a variation of this only. Only that you have the coupling capacitor over here okay so for this you need the coupling capacitor like this right for this you need the coupling capacitor like this then we have the second circuit which is there here which uses two power supplies vdd and vss minus vss rather here we use vdd only whereas here vdd and minus vss two power supplies Okay, so this two power supplies, so effectively what we are having is, this is grounded now. This was, you know, VG voltage was there, whereas now this is grounded. So effectively, it just means in place of VG, we have got here minus VSS. We are replaced 
the VG, which was there earlier here, by means of the minus VSS. So this is what we had. And that is rather got by this circuit. And that is rather replaced, VG is replaced by, you know, minus VSS. Earlier, you know, this point was grounded and we are getting VG from this. But now this is grounded and this is the negative voltage. So RG is, you know, connected to the ground. RG, the gate resistance is connected to the ground. Uh, and it should be a very high, you know, uh, resistance, okay. So RG forces, uh, you know, the, then we have the uh, next one, the, the third method, so to say, and this is also quite good enough, biasing using the drain to get feedback resistor. This is similar to the collector to base feedback resistor in the BJT collector to base feedback resistor in the BJT. So RG forces uh, VG to be equal to VD. So that's very important here. We know that there is no base current into the, uh, sorry, there is no gate current to the MOSFET. The reason being that the input impedance of the MOSFET is infinite. So because there is no, you know, uh, so to say gate current, there is no voltage across RG, negligible voltage. So whatever voltage is there here, same voltage will be here. So VD will be here itself. So RG forces VG to be equal to VD because IG is equal to zero, right? And RG is a very large value, uh, mega ohms range for high input resistance. And also to see that the transistor, the transistor works in the saturation region. So this, you know, we know that the the, the value of this is, you know, the whatever value is there here, same thing is going to appear over here. So we can always write that the VDS, VDS is equal to VGS because D and G. D and G are at the same potential. So VGS is equal to VDS and that value will be equal to VDD minus IDRD. This voltage will be equal to VDD minus IDRD. You can write it in different ways. VDD is equal to IDRD plus VDS you can write. From that you can write VDS is equal to VDD minus IDRD. Okay, so that's what is written over here. You can write it like this also, okay, where VDS is replaced by VGS because the gate, the gate and the drain are at the same potential because of the reason that the gate current is equal to zero. Okay. So we have the again RG acting as a negative feedback resistance or degenerative resistance. So uh, how does it provide the stability? is what again we are talking about if id increases then the if id increases right if id increases then the rd id will increase rd id will increase and since vdd is constant the value of the vgs you know decreases the value of vgs decreases if id increases the value of VGS decreases because VDD is constant, right? Because you have you are subtracting over here, right? ID increases, RD ID will increase. VDD minus a large value will make the VGS decrease. If VGS decreases, then this equation gives us that ID decreases. Okay, if VGS decreases, then ID decreases. So an increase in ID will decrease in VGS, and then that will decrease in VGS. The ID because of this equation, okay, thus giving us the stability, quite good stability. So RG keeps ID as constant as possible, and that is the G generative resistance. Okay, this is basically a common source amplifier. Okay, common source amplifier. So apply the input signal to the gate via a coupling capacitor so as not to disturb the 
DC pass condition already established. This is the standard. Coupling capacity is a must, you know, uh, between the input signal and this amplifier so that the DC bias is not disturbed. The amplified output signal with the train is again, is coupled to another part of the circuit, again via a, another coupling capacitor. That means again, you should have a coupling capacitor here also. Here you have a coupling capacitor, here also you have a coupling capacitor. Similarly, in the earlier circuit also, here you have a coupling capacitor, then again, we have need to connect another coupling capacitor here also. Okay, that's what he's telling. Both are the input and the output side, similar to the, you know, BGT. Now, this is a constant current source where we just replace the RE by means of the constant current source. Okay, constant current source. This constant current source is this, or rather, this point is connected over here. So, you know, here we generally, you know, so to say, this will provide very good stability because of the this provides a very good stability over here you know because of this uh, what is known as constant you know current mirror current mirror and you'll study more of that when you come to the vlsi design okay vlsi design right so this is a very important circuit where we just you know keep the ID value equal to the uh, reference value. Current entering here is zero because this is in the differential amplifier configuration, okay, which uh, I think uh, is again out of the scope of our syllabus. If ID increases, the you know, differential amplifier just says that both these uh, you know, values should be same, ID2 and ID1 should be same and if none current enters over here, ID2 will be same as I reference, giving very good stability, giving very good stability, okay? So the differential amplifier just says that both are, you know, the ID2 and ID1 are same, and because ID1 is same as I ref, because you have zero current entering the, you know, get of the transistor, ID2 will be same as the I reference value. ID2 will be same as the I reference value. Okay, so that is again, uh, as I said, it's it won't come in the exam, but please remember that this is the most uh, you know used method in, in the integrated circuits, and this is the one which is used. Others are just you know for the sake of study. Okay, so all that is written there, you know, why and how of it. So we'll not go into it. Okay, so this is a you know numerical which we'll consider. Uh, any doubts you have till now, you can ask, or any other query you have other than the subject, also you can ask. So I think I'll stop the recording for this.